Welcome to Harley Street Beauty, the beauty show with the latest top tips to looking and feeling great. Here's what's coming up on today's show. We discover the amazing and surprising benefits of Botox with Dr. James Frey. It takes three to five days to actually work. We go behind the scenes of an unusual Botox procedure with Dr. Dern. That was incredible. We find out the latest advances in Invisalign Invisible Braces. The system that we're using today is, is absolutely the cutting edge. The applications of Botox are many and varied and certainly not just limited to the face. We sat down with Dr. James Frame to get a better insight into this amazing procedure. But botulinum toxin is, is actually a, a product that was developed some 20 or 30 odd years ago. And there was a, a rather clever little person, uh, south of coast of England actually, who, um, who, who developed a, the theme that with his wife that if you use judiciously a purified, diluted amount of toxin to a person's forehead. It actually took away the line and the wrinkle. And uh, it really escalated from there. And you, know, you have to take your hands up and say, you know, this is a great product. Um, because it's also used in really quite serious medical conditions like spasm of sphincters or bladder problems, or bowel problems, uh, lower esophagus problems, people with sweating problems, people with severe muscle spasm like you're born with a torticollis which is a wry neck. You know, Botox actually relaxes and, and cures an awful lot of people. Um, it has a downside in that it is a, you know, it, it is a product made from a bacterium which is killed, purified and made medical grade. Part of its uh, reconstitution though is, it is you, know, you have to use human albumin which is a, you know, a blood product which you know, everybody takes the precaution to, to make a product that you don't have any form of transmissible disease but that's the only little bit really that gives me a little bit of cause for hesitation. Botox works um, uh, effectively at what we call the, the, the motor neuromuscular junction. So a nerve will transmit an impulse across a gap to the muscle to cause it to contract. And that chemical that sits in that little area is known as acetylcholine. And what it does, it prevents that little product being produced. So when you give it to somebody, you have to wait for the, the supply, the, that motor end plate, to, uh, to, to have gone away and it will not be reproduced. So it takes three to five days to actually work. It doesn't work straight away. Um, and it may even take up to two weeks till you finally exhaust it. And the faster you move, the more you contract, maybe the faster the effect will, will be. We also, if you put too much as a surgeon into one little area and, and you do too much moving too quickly, you will actually spread its effect. Because it doesn't just work where you inject it, it will disseminate a little bit within that tissue to have a sphere of influence slightly beyond what you've injected. Now we, we as surgeons um, have, have different forms of this botulinum toxin and obviously we don't need to go into the trade names of it, but it's, it's actually not licensed for use in facial rittids and lines and creases and that sort of thing. Um, th there is one particular product that is, uh, and that's just really licensed for the central area. We can use Botox off license, if you like, to differentially paralyse muscles, to, to elevate an eyebrow or to drop an eyebrow or to take away lines and creases around the the sides of the eyes. We can also use it to change shapes of noses or bunny lines or people with very tight muscle contractures around the, 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 the jaw. We can even use it to change the direction of creases. Um, but it has to be used really, really carefully and, and we have to understand that you know, what we paralyse, that muscle always has an equal and opposite muscle going the other way, which then will become stronger because it's unopposed. So you end up with a differential pull going in the opposite direction. Now the unwanted effects that you need to know about, there's really only two key areas that I worry about. One is a little bit above the midline of the eyebrow, and the other is in the midline of the eye going down to the corner of the, the mouth. Any Botox in either of those two areas could paralyse muscles that you don't want. So a lot of thought needs to go into which muscle groups you're treating and what you're trying to achieve with the, the Botox. And its effects only last three months because by and large this chemical transmitter finally returns. So if you get an unwanted effect, you've got to wait three months, at least, to, to get over it. So we've heard the expert view on Botox and what it can do, but has that been enough to convince you? 
Would you get it in time for your big day? You can get like injects from your lips. You can have it from your eyelid as well. Just to get rid of the wrinkles, I suppose. Rather than people altering their bodies to suit the image that they have of themselves in their head, they should probably think about why they have this certain image of themselves in their head and deal with that rather than deal with the physical problem. It's their decision, but I also think they have to take responsibility for that. So if it does go wrong eventually, or they get to a certain age where it can't hold out anymore, then they've taken the choice to do it. If they really want to do it, that's absolutely fine. And if people look at them and go, oh my god, well, that's their choice. So today I'm treating Tom. Tom is an actor and model. Tom's major concern is that unfortunately he sweats a lot. Now this is a problem that is very, very common, but people feel that there's nothing that could do be done. Um, it can affect their social life, it can affect their work life. I have patients that won't wear certain colours of clothes because of the, the sweating. I'm literally like two buckets of water. It's kind of, it is embarrassing. Nobody wants to admit you've got excess sweat. And I, I mean, you can buy these sprays, purse sprays, they don't last. Botox has a license in the UK for excess armpit sweating. The way Botox actually works in the armpit is much the same way it actually works on facial muscles. Botox actually prevents something called a neurotransmitter sending the signal, the nerve signal, to the sweat gland. That's exactly the same mechanism in which it works to relax facial muscles. It's very simple. We're going to map out the armpit area and then very discreetly I'm going to inject very small amounts of Botox just in the skin of the armpit area. And that little bit of Botox in each of those little sectors will just stop the sweat glands from responding to the nerve signals and providing the body with sweat. It is going to improve the sweating. And the way it does that is by um, reducing the nerve transmission into the sweat gland. It works in very much the same way it does on muscles for cosmetic use. <laughs> I normally have this effect on people. <laughs> Sorry, that, I wasn't expecting it. I do apologise. What have you just done, Wendy? I've just put um, a cold pack onto this young man's arm and I didn't prepare him, so I, I, I do apologise. That was incredible. That was borderline pain pleasure, but actually once you get over it and think of the actual results, I have no more sweaty armpits, which lasted about two minutes, maybe three. Can you imagine? I can just get ready and go off and all sorted for the next three months. Job done. And that's it. That's it. That's it. We'll find out how Tom's checkup appointment went a bit later in the show. Making your hair lighter seems so straightforward, but it's actually one of the trickiest things to get right, and you certainly don't want this issue in the lead up to your big day. Luckily, we've enlisted the help of Top Salon in Anch, London to take us through it step by step. Going lighter can be tricky to do it safely at times, so we've enlisted Top Salon in Anch, London to take my hair lighter, but again, safely, and that's the most important thing, that if you are lightening your hair, you need to do it the best way, and normally, that's quite a slow process, so you can't just jump three colours within a day. You've been blonde, then you darkened it, then you slightly now want to lighten it, but don't want to go blonde. We need to add warmth to your hair, to make it look a little bit more lively, a bit more shiny, and also have a few highlights. You're saying that if you are colouring your hair, you were mentioning earlier to me, that to use the correct shampoos absolutely. and conditioners, and also to remember to use masks. Yes, absolutely. If putting that treatment it's on your hair. It's very important, especially for blondes, or if you want to go blonder, if you do go a lot to the sun, you must use the right products. The right shampoo, the right conditioner, and if, if your hair is dry, you should use mask once a week. Okay, now what are the stages you're going to take my hair through to just go marginally lighter today? Uh, well, I, I really don't want to use bleach on your hair, just because I can see it's been quite through a lot. So I'll just add a little bit of gold, gold lights 
and I'll add a little bit of warmth as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. These yeah. are warmer colours, mm -hmm. warmer tones, just to give you a little bit of warmth back in your hair. And also we want to use a little bit of gold highlights as well. Just to but lift it slightly. Yes, slightly, but, slightly, but, but we're not going to go just... too much, yes. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to keep it naturally, on the nat natural side. Okay. I'm using Maji Mesh, which is a very lovely ammonia free. It's still bleach, but it's a ammonia free one and it's, it makes really lovely colour and I'm going to use very little of that, just on the top of the hair. When you are lightening your hair, it's so important to consider the safety and the wellness of your own hair. So you shouldn't really jump three shades in one day. The best way to do it is the way we've done it today is we've lightened the hair and it looks more sun-kissed um, with a collection of different highlights and lowlights throughout the head. So that's the safest way to do it and I'm really happy that I have lightened but it's not too drastic. Welcome back to Harley Street Beauty, the show that helps you look and feel amazing. Coming up on Harley Street Beauty. Discover the latest trends in the world of Invisalign invisible braces. I've always hated my front tooth there, so fingers crossed it'll work. We find out if Tom's Botox procedure was successful when he returns for his checkup. I have actually been feeling amazing since I've had my treatment. An increasingly popular way of straightening teeth is through the use of Invisalign Invisible Braces, renowned for their effectiveness and subtlety. Despite it being a recent procedure, technology never stands still and progress is constantly being made. That's why we visited the Harley Street Dental Studio to find out the latest developments. So the Invisalign procedure uh, consists of initially scanning or recording um, information from the patient of how their teeth are, how they fit together, and then that's sent to Invisalign and a CAD CAM or computer model is created of their teeth and from that we can design their treatment plan and produce a set of Invisalign aligners to help move their teeth. Today we're going to be taking the records or scanning a patient for their Invisalign aligners. That basically involves taking a digital copy of their teeth and how their teeth fit together and then those will be scanned and sent to Invisalign via the internet and then we can produce their computer model. So we're going to be using the iTero scanning system which is a, a laser digital scanning system. The system that we're using today is, is absolutely the cutting edge uh, in Invisalign treatment. Um, it's cutting edge in digital dental scanning so this is the latest state-of-the-art way to take the uh, digital record of the patient's teeth. Invisalign is different to traditional braces because it's removable. In other words, you can take the aligners out. They're also virtually invisible, so they're very, very difficult to see when they're in place. And of course, traditional braces usually use metal or ceramic and wire materials that are placed in the mouth, so they're much more obvious. Invisalign tends to be more comfortable, uh, more flexible for people's lifestyle and it's much, much easier to manage than traditional braces. Scanning generally follows a very logical pattern, starting on one jaw, doing one side of the teeth and then going back and doing the inside and then moving then on to the opposite teeth and the opposite jaw once we've done that. And then we'll produce a computer model of the teeth which can then be used to more accurately assess how long treatment is going to take. The workflows changed significantly um, because before we had to take impressions of the patient's mouth manually, now we can digitally scan them and that means that the information uh, arrives at Invisalign an awful lot faster. We can provide a patient with aligners in about double the time that we had previously. It also means that the fit and the accuracy of their aligners is much greater. And overall that means that the treatment is more predictable 
and therefore usually happens a lot faster. Anywhere where we've, um, where we've missed a piece of information, the machine will, will guide me and tell me where we need to go back and pick up that information or make it more accurate. But the important thing is that at the end we have to have all the information in place. It feels like a pen in your mouth, best way of describing it. Just taps your teeth and moves on to the next one, it's just fast and easy. Essentially it's a virtual model, almost like it was made from old fashioned dental plaster, um, of all her teeth, her gums, um, the way they fit together, the way they bite together, and this is incredibly accurate. Invisalign translate this information into a computer model or CAD CAM, it's estimating the number of aligners at 16, so that's a 32 week treatment. So this is our end result with everything nice and straight. I've had my teeth whitened maybe five years ago and when they did the impressions they put like, this goo stuff into your mouth and it goes quite far back, makes you gag. Um, and that is quite uncomfortable, so that was, it was nothing compared to that, it was fine. The iTero machine is quite new to the dental market, so there are only a handful of practices in the UK that are actually using this at the moment. I am looking forward to starting my Invisalign treatment. I've always hated my front tooth there, so fingers crossed it'll work. Have a nice straight smile. But more information can be found about the iTero scanning system on Invisalign's website and the individual doctors or dentists who provide the iTerra service for scanning for Invisalign that can also be found on Invisalign's website. Earlier in the show, Tom visited Dr Dan to tackle his sweating issue. Dr Dan's solution was to inject Botox into Tom's armpits. A few weeks later, Tom was back in the clinic to see if the procedure had been successful. But before we head over to Harley Street, we ask you whether you'd consider this sort of procedure. That does change your life in a sense, you know, it changes the way you feel about yourself, yeah. you're more confident. I think why not? Yeah, As it is more socially acceptable nowadays. Yeah. Like. The idea of growing greater old gracefully is something that we also really look at and I think it's too easy to just go out on a whim and say, right, I'm going to change this about me, change that about me, but do we know enough about the long-term effects of what it will affect us? I have actually been feeling amazing since I've had my treatment. In the beginning, I was a bit kind of apprehensive because I thought I might need more or I might need less or, you know, you just have all these things that you build up in your head that untrues about the whole situation because, you know, I've never done anything like that before, so I was apprehensive, but uh, it, it's been amazing. It's been absolutely wonderful. Botox generally lasts about three to four months. However, my personal experience is that when injected into the armpit, it does actually last considerably more. That does depend upon the person's lifestyle, their exercise regime, and obviously how much they sweat in the first place. And it's very much subjective. For some people, a small amount of sweat can be very devastating. For others, a large amount of sweat means nothing to them. I've just come back from being on holiday and all my little friends were sweating like pigs and I wasn't. I was like Sahara Desert, bone dry. Remarkable. I cycled, I cycled all over the place all the time and you just get to wherever it is you're supposed to be. You smell fresh. It's amazing. It's just, I can't believe it. I mean, it's a huge confidence thing, isn't it? You know, I mean, in the evenings in particular, I don't have any issues anymore. I mean, I don't even wear deodorant anymore. I don't need to. I just don't. I wear aftershave and that's it. There's just so many amalgamation of small little areas in my life that it's really helped. It's not cheap, but it is worth it. Botox longevity for cosmetic use does vary. Part of the variance depends upon the amount that's actually injected. But it's very important to treat people artistically and not to over-treat them for the for the results that unfortunately can occur, such as frozen faces um, and, and certain side effects such as droopy eyes. Certain people with large muscles may need more Botox to get the same sort of result as somebody with slight muscles. So for instance, men generally require more Botox to improve a frown line or a crow's feet or something like that compared to perhaps a woman. 
So there is a individuality that one has to take on board, but generally speaking, when treated right, you normally can get three to four months out of a Botox treatment. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today, but join us next time when we'll give you more top tips to looking and feeling fab. Bye for now.